virtual organization. We all know that virtual organizations represent structures that are motivated by specific market opportunities. In this lesson, we will define virtual organizations, describe the need of virtual organizations, explain the post-industrial and post-bureaucratic organizations, and state the meaning of bureaucratic organization. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain virtual organizational characteristics and need of a virtual organization, role of virtual organization and managing the virtual enterprise, challenges to creating virtual organization, and post-industrial and bureaucratic organization. Virtual organization is a temporary or permanent coalition of autonomous organizations that pool resources, capabilities and information to achieve common business objectives. The virtual organization VO is viewed as an organization consisting of independent partners who try to combine their strengths, skills, resources, risks and finances in order to produce ideas or a product. Members of the VO are often geographically dispersed and communicate with the help of information technology. VOs are created when consortia of legal entities wish to work together to produce a product, provide a service or tender for a contract, but do not wish to either have one contracted party to which the others are subcontracted, or to create a new legal entity which they jointly own. Models of virtual organization are co-alliance model. In this model, several organizations come together to work on project by project basis. Star Alliance model, which consists of a code dominant organization and other satellite organizations or individuals. Value Alliance model, where interrelated products, facilities and services of a supply chain are brought together. Market Alliance model, which may consist of a several value alliance models and will include the coordination with regards to manufacture, marketing, distribution and selling. Virtual organizations are very important to fulfill the need of customers. Virtual organizations will develop in many industries as customer requirements become more difficult to achieve or where risk prevents enterprises from acquiring companies to fulfill customer or project requirements on their own. Markets become more project oriented. The market consists of lots of small organization and companies. Characteristics of virtual organization are ad hoc partnership. Partners in virtual organizations share risks, costs and rewards in, in pursuit of a global market. The common characteristics of these organizations include a purpose that is motivated by specific market opportunities world-class core competence, information networks, interdependent relationships and permeable boundaries. This ability of multiple firms to create synergies among world-class functions and processes creates untold possibilities. Use IT as a means for coordination. Members of the virtual organization in turn create a network of interdependent relationships. As organizations create these New linkages, advanced information technology becomes an important element and key to the success of a virtual organization. Computerized information systems allow employees from geographically dispersed locations to link up with one another. A virtual organization works as a facilitator. The following are the key functions of virtual organizations as a facilitator. The virtual community provides a framework to analyze the aspects of virtual enterprise. Strategic operations are at the core of the community which involves value operations, value organization and the value objectives and value proposition. We see how these aspects of a corporate management have changed over time. Go through the diagram. The management of a virtual enterprise involves managing networks both internally and externally. The internet is shown as the link between the company's internal and external information technology. This is where the internal organizational aspects of the virtual enterprise interact with the external environment. 
partner objectives, customer perceptions and expectations, and organizational process management are the core activities of the virtual enterprise. Go through the diagram. There are different challenges to be overcome in the virtual organization environment. These challenges include infrastructure and people issues. In order for a virtual organization to operate efficiently, the flow of information to enable decision making and management is required. This means that all members of a virtual organization need to introduce a coherent IT strategy that enables information free flow. The IT challenges that must be overcome include availability, expense, performance, mobilization. Meet user requirements and security. Next is challenges related to people. The people challenges relate to the interaction between members of the virtual organization. The people issues are easier to solve in the centralized model since the core organization in the position of power and dictates objectives and solutions. Members that do not conform will not be chosen. The people challenges that need to be overcome include unrealistic expectations, different culture, collaboration over long distances or time zones, diverse processes or procedures and management practices. The post-industrialism refers to the period of growth in which the importance of manufacturing sector decreases and most of the economies focused on service, information and research areas. Such economies are often marked by a declining manufacturing sector, growth of service sector and growth of information technology. The way of analyzing the structure of an economy is to compare the shares of its three main sectors, agriculture, industry and services, in the country's total output and employment. The term knowledge-based economy results from a fuller recognition of the role of knowledge and technology in economic growth. A bureaucracy is a form of organizational structure in which people can be held accountable for their actions because they are required to act in accordance with well-specified and agreed-upon rules and standard operating procedures. Weber believed bureaucracy could assist organizations. He proposed a set of organizational characteristics that would ensure efficient functioning in both government and business settings. The bureaucratic model is preferred where change is not anticipated or where rate of change can be predicated. Post-bureaucracy generates its own set of problems concerning control, risk and fairness. The post-bureaucratic is used in two senses in the organizational literature, one generic and one much more specific. The bureaucratic model of Weber can serve equally well in analyzing either the functional or the dysfunctional ramifications of organization structure. if you have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Virtual organizations represent structures that are motivated by fluctuating market opportunities. Right or wrong? Wrong. Post-bureaucracy generates its own set of problems concerning control, risk and fairness. Right or wrong? Right. The bureaucratic model of Weber can serve equally well in analyzing either the functional or the dysfunctional ramifications of organization structure. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. A virtual organization consists of a group of companies acting as one company to fulfill a need in the marketplace. The emergence of the virtual organization has seen erosion of traditional hierarchical organizational structures to a form somewhat less structured. This new organizational structure has seen traditional organizational barriers being replaced by inter-organizational processes. Bureaucratic structures have a certain degree of standardization. Both bureaucracy and post-bureaucracy have developed within the mainstream of organizational behavior. The bureaucratic model is preferred where change is not anticipated or where rate of change can be predicated. Post-bureaucracy generates its own set of problems concerning control, risk and fairness. 
Both bureaucracy and post-bureaucracy are criticized for privileging efficiency over other considerations such as ethics. Critical approaches are themselves criticized for being utopian.